Well, the Associated Press and Politico have both reported in the last month that Obama has an enemies list. We know Bill Clinton had one. Now, the Globe, which is about as good as the Inquirer, though they don't do Bat Boy and Aliens Landing in Central Park, they claim that they have a White House source with the enemies list. I think this is a public threat to people. And uh, we're going to be going over that after Ray McGovern leaves us. Ray McGovern is uh, one of President Ronald Reagan's intelligence briefers from 81 to 85. He was in charge of the preparing the daily security briefings for Reagan and Vice President George Herbert Walker Bush and the National Security Advisor, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and a cabinet. Uh, later, McGovern was one of several senior CIA analysts who prepared the president's daily briefing during the first Bush administration. He also famously challenged uh, then Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld at a press conference, where are the WMDs? And, and of course, uh, the Defense Secretary said, I never said they had WMDs. And he quoted Rumsfeld back and, and, and really devastated Rumsfeld. And that was really a turning point uh, because Rumsfeld had been saying they had the WMDs and where they were in and around to Crete. Then he had to back off. So I really respect Ray McGovern's analysis. He was also an infantry commander during the uh, Vietnam era as well, and the Army of Memory serves correctly. And uh, he's been two years in remission from lymphatic cancer, so we're excited to have him here with us and doing better than ever. Uh, joining us is Ray McGovern. Ray, good to have you here with us. Thank you, Alex. Ray, uh, from memory, don't you have a new book out too? Well, I don't write books because then I'd lose my wife. <laughs> Okay, well, I heard somebody article. saying they heard you on Dallas radio about a book or something. Maybe you were talking about somebody else's book. Oh, I was, yeah. I was talking about uh, JFK and the Unspeakable, which is a book that uh, people really should read. It's by James Douglas, and it goes over the very, uh, the most recently released data on, uh, on the situation there in Dallas and elsewhere when uh, John Kennedy was assassinated. Very, you know, very interesting. You know, I, I had dinner with Martin Sheen uh, about a month ago, and he, he said it was the best JFK book he had read and was raving about it. And I forgot to get a copy of it. He was going to give me a copy of it, but I forgot to get it. Uh, why is everybody saying this book is so powerful? I mean, you're a former top CIA analyst. Uh, you know, Reading it yourself, I want to get into Iran, but that's a subject I never raised with you, is JFK. Uh, why are you so impressed with this book? Well, Alex, I have to confess that someone sent me that book about a year and a half ago. And as soon as I heard that uh, it had this theory that it was the CIA, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and people who had been suborned in the Secret Service that uh, planned and executed the assassination of John Kennedy. As soon as I heard that, I said, well, this is pretty far out. I got lots of articles to write. So I put it on my back shelf, but recently uh, I'm been reading it. I've almost almost finished. And I share the view of uh, those who, who have read it before and told me that it's the most painstakingly researched piece of, uh, of work and that it includes the very latest data that's been released from FOIAs or from other things. He conducted incredible uh, interviews with people on the spot. And uh, the evidence that he adduces, and you know, I'm an intelligence analyst, so I I know a little bit about this kind of thing, is very, very persuasive. And the reason that it has such current uh, current uh, attention and applicability is because the very forces that uh, Jim Douglas claims did JFK in are still very much around, are still very much uh, intimidating uh, a new president who, whose name happens to be Barack Obama, and uh, if you just run down the line of things, uh, it was Cuba mostly uh, because JFK would not uh, save the uh, abortive uh, Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. Uh, the CIA and the Joint Chiefs got very mad about that. When JFK wouldn't launch a nuclear war on the Soviet Union uh, during the, uh, the missile crisis in, in uh, 62, that got the Joint Chiefs really mad because they knew they had the advantage. And they, they told, look, Mr. President, it would only mean about 20 million of us killed, but we kill all the Russians. That kind of logic. That was L.L. L. Lemonser and Curtis LeMay, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Yeah, it was that crowd. Uh, 
That crowd was described by George Ball, the Deputy Secretary of State, as a cesspool. They're the ones that plan things like Northwoods and, and other things. So the, the primary, it's hard to put yourself back into those years, but there was such a an incredible, uh, visceral, knee-jerk anti-communism that, again, the, the Joint Chiefs thought it would be just fine if we did in all the Soviet Union in return to just, you know, maybe 20, 20 million casualties here. John Kennedy faced into that, and not only that, but he started talking with Castro independently and, and secretly, he thought, because the CIA knew about it, and he had a private correspondence with Nikita Khrushchev. He made a big speech at American University saying we ought to get along with the Soviet Union. And if, What do you know? But three months later, the limited test ban treaty is signed. The, the, the JCS, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, was cut out of those negotiations. So uh, you can understand how they felt about that. And last but not least was Vietnam, where John Kennedy was convinced it was a fool's errand. And he could not convince the Joint Chiefs, nor his immediate advisors like McNamara and Rusk. And so he had to sort of surreptitiously uh, move toward removing all our troops. And before he died, he ordered that the first thousand troops be brought home before the end of the year 63. And he started issuing U.S. greenbacks and was beginning to phase out the Federal Reserve and giving anti-Federal Reserve speeches. Yeah, he was running into lots of problems. And, you know, when Dwight Eisenhower warned about the military-industrial complex, uh, well, already uh, what he was seeing was a military-industrial-congressional media complex, which we have in full swing right now. And so he's really up against it. And so I admire him even more than I used to in facing right into that. And it's not at all uh, difficult for me to believe anymore that the, the people who both felt personally threatened and also felt that this fellow was selling out to the communists, took it upon themselves to plan this thing, carry it off, and then then appoint people to investigate it, in quotes, who would come out with the right, the, the best, uh, the right conclusion, the politically correct conclusion that this, this uh, Lee Harvey Oswald did it all alone. No one believes that anymore. So, you know, the, the applicability of this thing with Here's Barack Obama, uh, his big uh, be-ribboned and be-meddled uh, uh, general officers are telling him, oh, we're going to suffer defeat in, in Afghanistan if you don't give us 40,000, 45,000 more troops. That's exactly the same situation that JFK uh, faced. What about the secret Pentagon document that came out two weeks ago? Is there any validity to that from your research, Ray McGovern, uh, yeah. where they're saying they need 500,000 troops over the next five years? Well, you know, Andrea Mitchell ran with that, and I was really surprised because all the information that subsequently emerged uh, does not uh, does not indicate that that document talked about 500,000. What I think uh, people did perhaps was interpolate. They look at the ratio that the current Army manual says, the ratio of troops to, to citizens that is necessary for successful insurgency, and you multiply the numbers by the 38 million Afghans, and you get, you know, 500,000 or more troops that would be... Yeah, necessary. that was the original Secretary White told Bush, you need 500,000 or 450,000 to be technical. And Bush said, no, I can do it with 150. And I guess they're 23 million in Iraq, so the ratio would be above 500,000, wouldn't it? Exactly right. And when you say 23 million in Iraq, I have to tell your listeners that there used to be 27 million in Iraq. That's not to say 4 million were killed, but 4 million have been displaced. A million, I believe, have been killed. And you have many millions, 2 million uh, living internally as refugees and 2.5 million uh, living in the adjoining states. Ray McGovern, is, shifting gears. I want to, yeah. in, the, in the 40 minutes we have left with you, I want to get your, because I mean, this is what you brief the presidents on, you are an expert on these regions, and talk to the other experts who are specifically specialists in these areas. The geopolitical setup, they're now admitting that Russia did not sneak attack Georgia, it was the other way around. Uh, Obama is doing the right thing, saying he's going to pull missile systems out, but then he's hedging his bets from what I've seen, saying maybe some new system down the road. Uh, so what you see happening 
in Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, the, the U.S.-Russian relationship, and where all this is going. And then, of course, the $64 million question I want to cover first from what I've read, the Iranians said, okay, in a few months we're going to open this new facility. They announced it. Our media spun it and said, we found a secret location, and it looks to me like another big lie, or am I incorrect?